Welcome back to Overtime. Real estate values bouncing back this year, and with the Fed widely expected to cut rates or begin cutting rates next month, where are property investors placing their bets? Well, joining us now is Kathleen McCarthy, Blackstone Global Head of Real Estate, who runs the world's largest real estate portfolio by assets. It's so great to have you back here on set. Welcome. Thanks for having me. The last time you were here in April, you talked about the fact that it seemed like real estate was bottoming. Where are we at now in that cycle? We are still seeing that pulling through, and we've been very clear on that, even publicly starting with our earnings call in January, talking about how we saw real estate values bottoming, you know, really because cost of capital was coming down. And you don't have to wait for a rate cut to see that spreads are compressing. We look at the AAA portion of the capital structure. They have come in 50 to 60 basis points, 50 to 60 percent, excuse me, uh, since their wides in 2022. And so kind of with that, we have really tried to go on offense, not wait for an official all clear signal, but really use this moment where the environment is more capital constrained, where we see a lot of dislocation in the market to really position our clients and in interesting large transactions in particular in our favorite sectors. And so most recently, that was the $10 million take private of a company called Air Communities, a housing investment business that's really concentrated in urban markets, high quality product. Um, but you know, there have been all kinds of opportunities, including in partnership with public companies. We did a $7 billion joint venture with Digital Realty where they had sites in Europe and the United States, um, but not the capital to really catalyze those opportunities. And we were able to come in as their partner and do that. And I do want to get into housing. I want to get into data center, some of these other areas that you're very focused on right now. But first, just one more question on the macro, and that is, OK, Fed's short, all but short to start cutting rates next month. But we don't know how many cuts. We don't know over what period of cuts. And what I do wonder is, is the risk still out there more broadly looking across real estate and the subsectors for this wall of debt we've been talking about that is going to have to be refinanced to still hit some issues here and what's left of 24, 25, et cetera? Well, I think you are going to continue to see bad news. We think about it kind of like the aftershocks of an earthquake. But I think uh, what we have to all focus on is that there's actually a tremendous amount of resilience in the economy. We see spots of softening, uh, places where consumers may be impacted. So we're seeing that pull through into hotels or leisure businesses. We're certainly seeing kind of job growth uh, and wage growth come flatten out. But um, you know what, what we would expect to see is that you've had this experience where with the sharply higher cost of capital, higher construction costs, you've seen a sharp fall off as well in new supply. So in the sectors that are our favorites, logistics or rental housing, new supply is down 70 percent in logistics, 40 percent in multifamily housing when you compare that to recent peaks in 2022. And so while you're going to continue to hear, hear bad news, um, you know, I think a lot of it is going to be isolated to the office sector um, or to transactions that were done, you know, just with too much leverage for an environment that we're in today. You mentioned the digital realty uh, transaction, Europe and the U.S. What's your thesis that you use to really drive those kinds of investments, especially since energy costs seem to be an even more important part of the calculus with AI driving so much heat in the data center and liquid cooling requiring uh, on existing builds expensive retrofitting? Well, you know, I, I would just start by saying we are thematic investors. We invest behind megatrends. And with data centers, the megatrend is just the digitization of our economy. And you can think about data centers like the infrastructure for an information economy. And what we are seeing is technology companies making unprecedented commitments to that digital infrastructure that they need in order to propel their businesses to meet their customer demand. There's the opportunity today in everything from cloud computing to content creation to kind of all the information we're creating and processing and into, of course, the growing demand created by AI. AI requires an enormous amount of compute power, you know, something like 10 times as much as a regular Google search. And companies are really focused on trying to get ahead of that. We have tried to really position ourselves to be a provider of choice. In 2021, BREIT took private a company called QTS. QTS is a data center business. It owns and develops new product. 
Uh, it was the fifth largest data center business at the time. The combination of our vision about where the world was going, where this mega trend for digitization was going to take us to, and our capital has enabled us to propel this company to new heights. It's seven times larger as far as a footprint from, from when we bought it. It has a $22 billion totally pre-leased development pipeline. And you know, we see ourselves as just at the beginning of this. You know, and as it relates to the environment and the power constraints, interestingly, I think the power constraints as well as the sheer amount of capital required to develop these sites really creates somewhat of a natural supply constraint. You don't build these buildings speculatively. You have to be in the places where either you have access to power or where you can gain access to power. And I think you know, we have positioned the company to p participate in that. And then in partnership with others, we're doing that in all different ways all around the world. A $22 billion pipeline. It's a, it's a large number. I do want to, we said we were going to talk about it, and I do want to get your thoughts on what we're seeing in housing, especially as Blackstone has been forging further. One of the early pioneers of single family rentals, stateside, but you've been forging further into this, not just here in the U.S., but internationally as well. What are you seeing in these markets that's perhaps similar to what you've seen in the U.S., and what does it say about the housing inventory right now in general? Well, I'd say across the world, and certainly in the U.S., we have not kept up as far as supply with the amount of demand for housing. And we look at housing in, in all forms. And so when you think about in the U.S. and in so many markets where we invest in the world, one of the things that is, has propelled housing prices higher, uh, that has made it as a compelling place to invest as far as rent growth, is because we don't really have enough supply to meet the demand for it. So you know, just to give you a sense, in the U.S. today, we're building new housing at the same rate we were in 1960, and yet our population is two times the size as it was then. We have, we're four to five million units short of where we need to be. And so you know, what, what we you know, expect to continue to happen is that particularly as you see new supply coming off sharply, I mentioned that 40 percent decrease in new supply in rental housing, you're living through a period right now where rent growth is flattening, that's because of new supply that's coming online that was happening a couple of years ago. But on the from a long-term perspective, you know, it's a really kind of interesting place for us to invest because we continue to see really attractive fundamentals in the space. Where's the best opportunity in retail? And is there anything to be made of, of these hollowed out old malls? <laughs> Well, I, you know, I mentioned again that we're trying to put our investors' capital where we see the, the greatest benefit of tailwinds, and retail is certainly a place that has largely had some headwinds um, for a long period of time. And you think about, you know, really for the last 15 years, we have not invested in a large-scale regional mall in the U.S. Um, and instead, we put our capital into warehouses, where over 40 percent of our portfolio is concentrated, because on the flip side of those retail challenges, you've had all this demand driven by e-commerce for warehouses. And that's really been a global phenomenon. We've had tremendous success in retail in India. That's a place where just a growing middle class, a growing economy has propelled demand for both formats, online and in-store, and where there really is very little modernized infrastructure for retail. But I'd say by and large, um, across the world, you know, retail is a place where we're going to be really selective and instead really try to focus on data centers, rental housing, student housing, and, and warehouses is really the place we want to be with our clients. Okay. Kathleen, thank you so much for joining us. There's always so much to talk to you about within real estate, so we appreciate it. Thank Kathleen you. McCarthy.